Welcome to On Earth As It Is In Heaven, brought to you each week with the support of the Eastern Orthodox Clergy Association of the Mahoning Valley and with the generous support of faithful listeners. It's our desire to expose orthodoxy to all who tune into this program and who speak of this experience to others. This is our effort at making small steps towards the salvation in the spiritual realm for all who listen. Here are your hosts for this week's edition of On Earth As It Is In Heaven. Well, good afternoon, everybody. What a beautiful day we have outside. As we move on fall, Father Colin and I are here today to talk with you. And Father, what do you think we're going to talk about today? Well, there's a few things. I think our topic today is going to be the mystery of the Christian life. I think it'll be wonderful. But you know what, Father? I just, I want to change the format a little bit. Go ahead. And, you know, we never, what was what was your day like today as, as an Orthodox Christian priest? I mean, what do you do with your day? Well, some think I only work on Sunday mornings. <laughs> 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 yeah, and then I would tell them, you should go talk to my wife about yeah, that. Yeah, really? Yeah. Um, well, well, I guess we could just talk Why about... Why not, Father? I only go to church on Sunday. Yeah, right? I mean, I'm only there for just like an hour. Yeah, and I just leave. what do like, you do? I just yeah. want to feel good, oh, and you're not making me feel good right now. Um, so the life of the Orthodox Christian priest uh, is no different than the life of the Orthodox Christian. Uh, and usually my day starts out pretty early. Uh, I have little ones, so I'm usually up very, very early to the tapping of feet, running down the wooden hallway, mm -hmm. saying, I had a bad dream. <laughs> so that's usually how my day starts. Uh, but it starts with uh, waking up, uh, doing my morning prayers. Mm -hmm. um, after I'm done with my morning prayers, coffee with my lovely wife and, and my girls, uh, reading of scripture. I always try to do that as well. Every day I always read a few chapters of Holy Scripture. And then uh, I usually get up and go take a two mile walk. Mm. Uh, every morning I, I try to do a two mile walk every day uh, where I usually just listen to podcasts or I just walk in silence with my prayer rope uh, and just hearing the birds sing. And now I'm noticing that it's getting colder and colder that there's less and less birds. Mm -hmm. And so I'm not hearing them quite frequently, but I'm hearing a lot of the trees uh, moving and losing their leaves. That's a very beautiful sound, actually. Yeah, it is. So it usually starts with that, and then I usually head over to the church, uh, start my day with going in front of the altar and uh, praying for my people, uh, all of their names, and uh, praying for the newly departed. We have a recently new, newly departed individual who's just passed away. Mm -hmm. And we in the Orthodox Church, we pray for somebody for 40 days straight, and then we pray for them, uh, for the priest well, prays for him at every divine liturgy that he commemorates. Yeah, why do we pray for 40 days? Father? It's during the 40 days that the soul uh, is wandering with its guardian angel and uh, what we call as the first judgment uh, and where they're placed either, as we call it, in Abraham's bosom. And if you know Luke's gospel really well, uh, Luke gospel chapter 14, I believe it is, where it talks about the rich man and Lazarus, mm -hmm. rich man where, Lazarus. Where, where Lazarus goes into Abraham's bosom. And then uh, if you didn't live a righteous life, you go into what is called Hades and you wait the final and second judgment. Now, this is different from purgatory in the Roman Catholic uh, faith, uh, where they believe that there are certain levels of purgatory that you wait and that you know, this is where everybody goes through and some are a lesser degree and some are a higher degree. And the Orthodox Treasury of merits. Yeah, treasury of merits. You have to do this many things to get them out of there. And mm -hmm. it's kind of a, to me, it's... No, it's, it's, yeah, it's very strange. But it's an interesting development. Yeah, it is. Uh, but in Orthodoxy, we don't have that. And it's no. based on, on Scripture and the tradition of the fathers and tradition of the faith. And even the tradition of the Old Testament where the Hebrews, uh, the Hebrew people believe that everybody went into Hades. I mean, this is why Hezekiah was afraid of death. Remember, he's told, give me 15 more years. Mm -hmm. And then Hezekiah is given 15 more years to repent and to pray. But then this is why Christ's victory over death is so important because he goes into Hades where everybody is mm -hmm. and destroys it and takes all the righteous and those who wish to come with him. Now, everybody, Father, that's King Solomon, King David, uh, John the Baptist is mm -hmm. there, yeah. all of the prophets, yes. etc., all awaiting yeah. the Messiah. Yeah, and all yes. those who wanted to come with him. So, yeah. I mean, uh, and there's um, that's many. That's a lot. And uh, Hades is left for only 
uh, the demons right now and those who wish to not, who wish not to come with him. And so the rest were brought into Abraham's bosom or into paradise, also as we call it, paradise. Uh, now they they wait they enjoy the heavenly uh, gift uh, of what's awaiting for them when they truly reach the kingdom of heaven. So then Hades and hell, mm-hmm. paradise and heaven are unique. They are not the same thing. No, they're different. Okay. Right? So remember when Christ says in the gospel, he says, hell is prepared for the, for the devil and his angels. Hell was never created for us, right? It shows you a loving God, mm-hmm. how loving how, love, how much he loves creation. Uh, hell is, is a separate place to where uh, the unrighteous... Now remember, we choose to be righteous or unrighteous, right? We have that choice. Yes. But it goes, uh, the unrighteous and the devil and, the de- and his demons are, are sent to hell to be locked up. Of, and it's the abandonment of God's love, which is the experience of his love in this world. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Right? So, so God's judgment is passed on Satan and mm-hmm. his angels. Yeah. However, the judgment is not yet passed on us other than this uh, prelim. I forget what it's called. The, the, the first, judgment. first judgment. There's another word that we use also. Sure. I can't think what it is right now. And um, and we know about that judgment from the scripture. Yeah. Do we also have any other uh, saints who had visions of this same thing? Yeah, there's lots of them. Yeah. There's lots of them. There's St. Macarius the Great, mm-hmm. the great desert father uh, who had visions of uh, <clears throat> what Hades and paradise look like. Mm-hmm. Uh, he also had visions of, of what hell would uh what look like? I mean, Saint John, the theologian, whose memory we celebrate tomorrow, uh, he obviously saw that through the Book of Revelation. What was going to happen to those who are cast into hell mm-hmm. and the fireiness and the worm that never stops eating? Right, and it's actually a very frightful, very frightful depiction. I mean, even even in the icons, every uh, right before Lent starts, we commemorate what's called the Last Judgment. Mm-hmm. And in the icon, it's very frightful. Mm-hmm. It's one of the few icons that you're actually not really supposed to venerate. And if you do venerate it, you're supposed to venerate Christ at the very, 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 very top. top of it. That's the only thing that you should this venerate. This is what the ladder of divine ascent. No, no, no. This is last Which judgment. One? Last judgment. Oh, last judgment. And then on the ladder of divine ascent is the same thing. Christ is mm-hmm. in the top corner, and that's yes, the only part that you, sh- you should only venerate because if you venerate anything else, <laughs> yeah, there you're venerating the demons. <laughs> yeah, there's demons. There's depiction of demons in the icons, yeah. and so it's a very interesting. It's a mystery, right? Just like the Christian life is a mystery. But death itself is, uh, as the fathers call it, the last final mystery to which we have to wait and experience. We have many experiences from the fathers, but we ourselves will will all go through it. All of us will depart this life eventually, whether it's tomorrow or when we're 90 years old. um, It it, it all awaits us. But there's beauty in it because, because of Christ's victory over death. You know, death was, which is what frightened the ancient peoples. Mm-hmm. Death used to frighten them because they were all summoning to to the same place, Hades. Mm-hmm. But in Christ's victory in Pascha and Easter, his victory is more than just having a nice breakfast. His victory, uh, <laughs> it opens the door to salvation. Yeah, it opens right. it opens the door. Conquered death. Yeah, it opens the door also to being like God, right? This is why the nativity is important to celebrate. It's not just a nice candlelight uh, meal or uh, skipping church because you want to have dinner at six o'clock instead of going to midnight service. Um, no, it's more than just that. It's about God truly becoming man and taking on our struggles and our sorrows and then telling us to bear your cross. I mean, well, to endure a cross, I mean, to bear a cross, when he says, take up your cross and follow me, when Christ says that, there's only one reason for that puppy. That's to go up the hill and then to be crucified on it. Yeah. Because everything which is not Christ in you must perish. Yeah. And that's what crucifying ourselves yeah. mean. So that's why death has become part of our salvation, because we're given this chance to uh, cleanse ourselves of everything which is not Christ. But then you're going to ask, well, then why did God create me? Well, for you to know him. There's a relationship. Yeah. You know, there's yeah. a relationship. Yeah. Uh, you know, Father, um, I think it, it it's very perplexing to th- realize that some people, when they celebrate their birthday, they don't celebrate it until the very moment <laughs> on the day of their birth. So they are not yet aged to the new, the, to the uh, passing over into the new 
age of themselves until that very moment comes. And they, they honor that. But they don't, but so many find it themselves not able to take the inconvenience of going to the services for midnight, Mm -hmm. even though they say many, Scripture only, and the Scripture is very clear that it was on a midnight clear, Mm -hmm. and that Christ was so we go at that hour showing respect for Christ and yet we'll do that for our own birthdays but not for the Lord Jesus by whom we are saved yeah it's funny you say that um, I was at uh, a farm here in Canfield and I won't say its name because I don't yeah. want to damage his business because that'd be bad on me but they do need to hear this and God willing they'll repent <laughs> um, I was we every Friday is my day off and uh, or at least I think it is and because uh, I still get phone calls and other, every, every other thing to do that a priest has to do. Um, and so we were there and they had, you know, there's the Halloween section and the girls are trying to find pumpkins, you know, mm-hmm. uh, and there's really not, I mean, we're not doing anything else. And there was a Christmas section. And so we saw little gnomes, Christmas gnomes, with beards, dwarves or whatever they were. And so we went over to that section and there was everything in there had nothing to do with Christ. There was nothing that said what was there. Uh, well, it was everything from, you know, those metal sheet Christmas trees, uh, mm-hmm. everything from Christmas dwarves to ice, uh, ice men to snowmen to, um, good grief. I can't even remember now because none of it was re- resembled anything no, that was Christian. Like that. It was so, it, we've, I think we've become so far secular that we've forgotten the meaning of our own Christian life, uh, which re- is revolves in and through Christ. And, uh, if we desecrate his, the day of his incarnation, his nativity, um, and we focus on only living the material life uh, when we were called to live both the immaterial and material life, uh, then well, then we're living the life of an uh, anti-Christian. Yeah, it's anti-Christ, yes. Yeah. Even though uh, we may profess Jesus, we may go to church, but we don't want to impose our beliefs on anyone else. How, but that idea of imposition in mm-hmm. a case like this sure. is a political correctness because... It is not an imposition that if I believe in Jesus and Christmas is coming, nativity is coming forward, I want people to know that this is what I believe in. Sure. Okay. This, it used to be that if I had a farm and I worked diligently at the farm producing crops, I didn't, I didn't produce crops just so I could make a profit. I produced the crops because I was feeding the community. Mm-hmm. It was connected to yeah. faith. Yeah. And and now it just gets so disconnected. It's it's uh everybody wants to be agribusiness. Everyone wants to be Rockefeller, you know, <laughs> Carnegie, DuPont. It it's like no one is any longer satisfied with that they have a reasonable life yeah. and enough. Yeah. Instead, we've said, what's enough? Uh, when I make one more dollar, yeah, that's when it's enough. Yeah, when I make one more dollar. Yeah, it's it's true, and it's and a lot of times it leaves a lot of emptiness. And maybe many of us have felt that. I mean, I have felt that before, especially when I was a kid. You know, then you become a teenager, and the holidays kind of change for you, and it's no longer. I hate using this word, but the Christmas spirit. You know, because mm-hmm. this Christmas spirit is is revolved around Christ, and um, <clears throat> and so uh, when I see a lot of that stuff, I, f- I feel a lot of pain for my old self. Uh, I repent over that, but I also feel pain for others who are experiencing that that emptiness, that loss of emptiness, um, because um, our faith, uh, I think, has become so fragile for many people, has become very fragile, and it is ready to break at any point. You know, it's funny that we're talking about this, because when we start the Divine Liturgy in the Orthodox Church, the priest has his hands raised up, and he's calling upon the Holy Spirit, but he prays from Luke's gospel, glory to God in the highest on earth, peace, goodwill among men twice. He says that twice, glory to God in the highest on earth, peace, goodwill among men. And he says that twice before the divine liturgy starts. And that's because the divine liturgy starts with the nativity and then it ends with him coming back again. But we're called to live that Pentecostal life. And now I'm going to explain that what that means, right? Christ tells us that the kingdom of God is within you. But then when we start the Orthodox Divine Liturgy, we say, blessed is the kingdom of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages, amen. 
And so we're glorifying God's holy kingdom because heaven and earth have now just touched. But then we go through this cycle of the, in the divine liturgy where we're actually living our life too as well. I mean, our life starts with blessed is the kingdom because the kingdom of heaven is within you. Mm-hmm. From the moment you are born until the moment you die. And then at the very end of the divine liturgy, we say, let us depart in peace. You know, if, if we all understood that clearly, blessed is the kingdom is a call to a blessing on the kingdom of God within us. Yeah. Blessed is the kingdom of God within us, given us by God. I, I don't know, I, I can't imagine that it wouldn't shake us if we actually understood the magnitude of that. Yeah, 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 I, I agree, I agree. But so, you know, continuing on with my day, you know, I go in front of the altar, I pray for all my people, ask for God's blessing upon them and ask for mercy and for the newly departed. And then, um, well, then I go in my office and get work done and that consumes anything from administrative work to uh, uh, getting ready for services, prep those and prepare those, uh, visiting shut-ins. We have quite a bit at our parish. We have quite a bit of shut-ins and they all live in different directions. <laughs> it takes a while to get to them uh, every month. Uh, so I'm, see- I'm seeing a few of our shut-ins. Mm-hmm. Right now we have one who's currently uh, on her deathbed and we ask for God's great mercy for yes. her. But I've been visiting her every single day mm-hmm. and um, George has been with me on that one. But I've been visiting her every day asking for God's great mercy. Uh, and then it also... Uh, and then once that's done, it's also preparing for, for the Orthodox Christian studies classes that we have. Yeah. You know, it's, it's really easy for a priest to just uh, throw you an article and say, all right, let's talk about how you feel. But, yeah. I, but I don't do that. I feel like sometimes that's the lazy way of doing it. That doesn't mean that I don't get help from outside resources like the Fathers and Holy Scripture. Um, but uh, I like to teach my people. I love teaching. And I believe that the more that we're educated and the more that we know about our faith, the more that we'll be truly excited to become like Christ. And so we have that study class on every Wednesday night and it's about an hour long. Mm-hmm. If you so ever want to come. If you ever want to come, it's at six, six, at six o'clock. Uh, and remember it's at St. Mark's and we meet in the church hall. And, uh, and so we discuss right now, we're talking yeah. about scripture in the divine liturgy and also what is happening during the divine liturgy. It's actually a really beautiful class mm-hmm. and really help, I think it helping a lot of- uh, To understand what, yeah. uh, why we do what we do. Yeah. You know, uh, people don't realize that uh, the liturgy is uh, 98.9% is script from Absolutely. directly out of scripture. Absolutely. And uh, so uh, they miss that. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, I think that's because many people, you know, I grew up, uh, I didn't grow up Orthodox, but that's because, you know, I grew up in my former confession of faith. I, I said, uh, you know, they would always quote chapter and verse to help, which is a good thing to always do. Mm-hmm. But in Orthodoxy, we don't quote chapter and verse in everything we say. No, it comes actually. just straight from it. And that's, it comes because, straight from it. that's because when the Bible was created and finally when the printing presses were able to do stuff, it wasn't like the 1800s that mm-hmm. there actually was chapter and verse. Chapter and verse is actually a relatively new thing. It's a very dangerous thing um, because it allows for people to dissect the Bible. And compartmentalize. Yep. yep. Instead of just leaving the Bible as here's the book of Matthew, here's the book of Mark, Luke, and John, mm-hmm. and not put chapters and verses in it. And so Orthodoxy never had that. And they just, all right, we know this is from John's gospel, so we're praying it, or this is mm-hmm. from St. Paul's epistles, mm-hmm. or this is from the Psalms, because the people were praying it daily. I mean, in the in the ancient church, I mean, and even in the old country churches, Orthodox countries of like Greece and, and the Middle East or in Russia, the priests serve divine liturgy almost every single day where they serve matins every morning and then vespers in the evening. I think that one of the most, this is this is a profound statement I'm yeah. about to make here, folks. Sure. The, the reason, chapter and verse, this was their yeah. book. This wasn't uh, like for modern day people, the Bible is something uh, uh, separate that they need to learn about, etc. Yeah. This was something lived. Mm-hmm. This uh, this was experienced by so many of the people that they yeah. converted, that that they were present for some or many of the events that were spoken of. Um, it's it was a living experience, yeah. and it was transmitted by. Mouth. It was mouth to ear, not page to eye. Yeah. Big difference. Yeah. Big difference. Yeah. And so uh, there was no need for chapter and verse, etc. I I appreciate having chapter and verse, and I really appreciate your ability to to call on chapter and verse something that I'm I'm not strong at at all. 
uh, which makes me more orthodox than you. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go ahead. <laughs> oh, shoot. I shouldn't have said that. Okay, anyway. Uh, <laughs> that was a good one. Thank you for humility, George. Thank I know, Father. Humility. I I'm, needed it. I, I actually, it I'm, I'm humbled by my humility. <laughs> 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 That's a good one. I'm so <laughs> humble. Oh man! All right, yes. go ahead. Continue. So anyway, um, yeah, I mean, <laughs> they, they. This was the living experience of these people, and they yeah. carried it to others who could see that living experience. And if we fail at all in in our in our Orthodox Christianity, I think it is not in transmitting that living experience, that heartfelt excitement yeah. over uh, being present to blessed is the kingdom and knowing that that is within me. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, St. John's epistles are filled with, with what you're talking about. And it's, and it's that love for God, you know, remember thy first love, you know, he, he is our first love and we can't forget him. And we have to constantly keep asking and drawing closer to him. I think one of the biggest mistakes that we make is that we muddle the definition of love. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. Love is, is truly sacrifice. It is truly sacrifice. And that's what Christ shows us. That's what the God man shows us. And we too have to imitate that and emulate it. And I think one of the things that we're scared of is do I love God or do I love the world? Mm -hmm. Right. That's what made me look at realize when I went to this little farmhouse to go, when we looked through the Christmas section, just wandering through the store, and it showed me the love for the world and not mm -hmm. for love for Christ. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, we have to be serious uh, and not live just a simple life, which is a really good start. I think for many, and oftentimes I tell people that you have to start living the simple life by having less material items because the less distractions we have, the more that we can focus on Christ in our daily life. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but more than just that, it's, do you truly love Christ? I mean, do do we truly love him? Now, yeah, that's, that's a question that I can't answer for you. I know that I fail at it every single day, and I'm a priest. You now, some people say, well, you're a priest, Father. You know, you should be loving the Lord 24-7. Yeah, but I'm I'm also human, too. Mm -hmm. You know, this is why an Orthodox priest wears what's called a black cassock, because it shows our sins. And so we're called to make it white, to be shining examples uh, to Christ's holy flock. And so um, it makes it a lot of times difficult and the life of the priest is very difficult because uh, you're surrounded by all this holiness, but yet so unworthy, mm -hmm. so unworthy to even, I mean, we, I, the priest touches his, touches the body and blood of Christ. The priest touches the holy sacraments of holy unction. The priest places the head on the person that's about to be baptized in holy water. You know, uh, I mean, there's so many countless things. I mean, the priest touches the Holy Cross. The priest touches holy relics. Uh, the priest is the one that put his hands on top of your head for the absolution of confession. Mm -hmm. But again, it's not me who's doing it. Yes, I think that's a misunderstanding amongst yeah. those who are not Orthodox, that it's not the priest that is actually uh, forgiving. He, he has the authority. How, how do we phrase it, Father? The priest was given yeah, the, the authority. authority. Yeah to witness for Christ before the believer and to what? Well, you absolve the sin. Well, yeah, I mean, it's what Christ tells the apostles. You, you hold have the, or release the yeah. sin upon this earth. Yeah, you, you have the, Christ tells the apostles, you have the power to bind and loose. Yeah, what, what chapter is, and verse is that? Uh, 23, I think, in Matthew's gospel. Don't quote me on that one. Okay. I don't know that one well. All right. I don't, I don't think it's Matthew 23. I'm, right. doubting, I'm doubting myself. That's okay. I have my Bible here, but I'll look later. But um, but I think that one of the things that we're scared of is that we're allowing, so far as a priest, you know, our you know, daily life is, is surrounded by all this administrative work, pastoral work, uh, then also waiting, you know, appointments with people who have confessions or counseling sessions, uh, people who um, meet on a daily basis. Uh, the priest's phone is always on 24-7 and always on call 24 seven. However, I turn my phone off after eight o'clock <laughs> mm. <laughs> because I realized that I have, I have to leave in order for me to live a spiritual life. I have to do the spiritual work. And so, uh, although yes, it's great and wonderful to, to help people. Um, I have to focus on my own spirituality. And so, uh, after uh, usually all that, um, 
through my daily activities. I usually try to end the end the day or end end the office, <laughs> end the the day at the church by praying vespers uh, or uh, praying something and then leaving to go home to be with my family, um, which I love coming home to because it's a joy. Because my spiritual father always constantly tells me, "Make your home paradise," and it truly my and I love that. I love that about my home, and I love that about my family that my home is truly paradise to me. Father, that verse regarding the uh, sure. forgiveness of sins is verse uh, 23 in John okay. 20. And uh, it's a, it starts at 20. It says, and when he had said this, he breathed on them. What did he say? I think that's important. Jesus said to them again, peace to you. As the Father has sent me, I also send you. Mm -hmm. Hear that. Hear that, brothers and sisters out there. As the Father has sent me, I also send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Mm -hmm. That authority was given by Jesus. This isn't a power play, which I've heard it called mm -hmm. by non, uh, non-believers. They say, oh, that's just a way of controlling people and power over them. Yeah. And uh, it, it is not. I'm not saying there aren't men who are clergy who never abused that authority. I'm saying that is not the purpose of it, and an abuser cannot negate the command of Jesus Christ. Well, and also, too, priests are held to a much higher standard of, on Judgment Day. Mm -hmm. And so if the priest is abusing it, remember that he has to answer for that. And, yeah. And that's scary. That's really That frightens me as a priest. Mm -hmm. That really frightens me that not to abuse the sacraments, you know, and... and and to remember that that they're not confessing to me, but to Christ, and I'm just yes. there as part of the physician. Yeah, the priest is called many things. He's called. Uh, I mean, I've been called many names, <laughs> <laughs> but one of the, the names that a priest is called is is physician, right from the fathers. What? Why are you laughing? Well, I could say a few things, but I won't. <laughs> <laughs> I mean that in love. I mean that in love. But I think that's a really beautiful title of the priest is that he is the physician mm -hmm. to help. Carter, carterize the wound, right? Yeah. And to pray for his people, to pray for God's holy people, because they don't belong to me, they belong to him. I just, they're, they're just entrusted to me for a time, a short time on this earth, you know? And the other thing that the job of the priest is to serve the liturgy, right? Which we serve every Thursday morning and on feast days uh, and on Sunday, God willing, we'll have many more uh, during the week. Um, but that's the main job of the priest is to do these things. And, um, it's a lot of work. I mean, there's days where, yeah, we get, I get home late. There's days where it starts really, really, really early. And, um, you know, being, especially with people who are mourning during funerals, uh, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. takes a lot of spiritual stress, you know, serving the liturgy takes a lot of spiritual stress on a priest. Uh, there's many priests who I know who serve the liturgy quite often. And by the time they're, you know, in their fifties or sixties, they're, they're pretty depleted mm -hmm. of physical energy, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, it. I think it's a, it's a, certainly a, a huge calling. I mean, uh, serving as as we have for uh, the young woman who is uh, in hospice mm -hmm. uh, has been certainly an eye opening experience for me. And uh, you know, you and I are there. My sister uh, Vicky is present there regularly. Mm -hmm. She's very uh, d loving, devout individual, and. Um, and you know what? To the non-Orthodox out there, you know, one of the things the church is accused of is being uh, patriarchal and chauvinistic. Oh, no, okay? not that. <laughs> so, I mean, my sister is there praying for uh, the for this young lady. Um, she's praying the same prayers as I pray, and I pray the same prayers as the priests pray, as she prays, except for certain prayers, which only the priests pray. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, we serve in 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 the same uh, manner. Someone asked me today, Father. Sure. Um, uh, women cannot cannot preach, right? Women can't uh, can't preach. I said, well, nobody. You'd have to tell Mary Magdalene. Then she had to shut up. And Fotheny, the woman at the yeah. well, she had to shut up. Or Saint Thecla, or any yeah, of those other or ones. Or any of them, because yeah. they evangelized, went out. The people converted yeah. as a result of what they did. Did they do it on the scale of the apostles? 
No, not on that scale. I would but, say close to him. Yes. I mean, many of yeah. the many of the women, uh, like Mary Magdalene and Saint Thecla, are called yeah. equal to the apostles. Okay, there you go. Uh, there however, you go. their ministry was a little different, meaning uh, so different of preaching of the gospel uh, for women and men, or let's just say a woman and a priest. Let's just say that. Yeah. The job of the priest is to preach the gospel at all times, but especially during the divine liturgy. Mm-hmm. But all times, I mean, even ministering to the sick or a funeral, whatever it is, I'm, I'm called to preach the gospel at all times. Mm-hmm. No one else can come up there and do that because they have not been given that authority. So yes, we would say that a woman's role in that moment is to to listen and to be educated just as a same in that as, moment. And same with your, same with you as well. Yes. I wanted to bring that and, in. And for the man, it's exactly the, the same. same. Now the job, now the difference is, is going out those doors and then preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ to everyone. No matter if you're a woman, a or child a man, or a child, man, that's right. You're, you're, everybody's called to preach it. That's right. Right. So yes, I'm called to preach at different times, but every man, woman, and child is to preach all the time. Yeah. Right. Yeah, but that's because during the liturgy or during the services or whatever it is, when the priest is preaching, that's because he's giving you the tools for salvation. He's giving you the tools to answer the world. Mm-hmm. Because right now our world is upside down. Our world is confused. Our world is—I uh, uh, I, want to use the term—they um, our world is so twisted right now that we believe uh, what is false is true and what is true is false. Yeah, that's how confused we are. Uh, on top of many other things. And so when we hear the truth, the gospel, it convicts us, but it also gives us the answer to the world. It gives us the answer. And so that's also the role and the job of the priest uh, to give you the tools to answer to this crazy world. I think on Wednesday night at our, at our study class, we were talking about in the divine liturgy, we have the epistle reading, we have the gospel reading, and then the priest is to preach right after the gospel in the Mm -hmm. homily. And in the ancient world, Homilies and sermons were, I mean, anywhere from uh, an hour to several hours. In mm-hmm. fact, in fact, in the missionary countries right now, especially in South America, the Orthodox priests preach for two, almost two hours now. Oh. And the missionary. Mm-hmm. So if you go on uh, OCMC and these mission trips, many of the priests have to preach for over an hour because they're educating the flock. Now, if I did that at St. Mark's, I would have people falling asleep and leaving. <laughs> I mean, I preach. I'm out of here. I do preach for a long time. I yeah. preach anywhere from 15 to 30 minutes, but that's because I'm trying to give my people the tools to answer this crazy world. Mm-hmm. Um, but I remember I said in the class on Wednesday night, I cannot give you my opinion. In fact, it's very even dangerous to talk about that because my opinion is the opinion of the church, which is true. And so that's why I always quote, from the scriptures and from holy men and women, the holy fathers to give me the words to give to the people. It's just the regurgitating of that information back to you through the power of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, I was talking with a friend this morning who's been inquiring into orthodoxy for a number of years and and, uh, he left a number, uh, 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 not, he left many churches because of the, um, the bishops were very taken with their own humility and status. Sure. The, the preacher, uh, was all about money, mm-hmm. um, et cetera, um, or they preached something that he thought was really off the wall sure. about, uh, the scriptures or something. <clears throat> and I told him, I said, you know, if you become Orthodox, uh, and you have a, a priest who's uh, all about the money, which can happen because they're men and they can fail. Sure. I said, so uh, if you decided you'd had enough with this priest, okay, and all about the money, you wouldn't have to, as you've had in the past, go, well, now i got to find another place where they teach what I can understand, when in fact, in orthodoxy, you would understand that's the failing of the priest. So if you personally cannot be there with that priest, you can go to another congregation immediately and you will hear the same truth yeah. not a different truth yeah. you won't have to seek a place to give you the truth that you seek you're in orthodoxy because it's the fullness of the truth yeah. the failings of people in We're the church yeah. go to the scripture yeah it's that's, all over the place that's why well i mean that's i mean the, the church herself is we always call the refer to the church as her so for those who to call the church patriarchic and chauvinist, chauvinistic, I would say to them, then why do we call the church her? Because in Greek, it's it's a it's a feminine word, mm-hmm. ecclesia. Mm-hmm. So we're going to say her, just like yeah. it's the same with the soul. We'll talk about that another time. Okay. But we we've always referred to the church as as a her. The church herself is beautiful and perfect. However, 
it is also the hospital for the souls who need to be healed. Yes. In which we are not perfect. But it's like we talked about last week. That's what we're striving for. That is what salvation is. Be we're perfect striving. As your father in heaven, heaven is, is perfect. perfect. And that's what we're striving for yes. is perfection. However, we fall. So get back up and keep walking. That's right. And so I think many of us get hung up on the falling part, but don't worry about the getting up part. Because mm-hmm. uh, it's very easy to just sit with the pigs and eat the pods, as the parable talks about with the, the, uh, the lost son. Well, my fallen nature son. is the reason for my sin. But it's not to be the excuse for it. Yeah. 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 And so I think I think for many of us, you know, the mystery of the Christian life is what we're kind of been talking about. Um, I think we're afraid to <clears throat> dive a little bit deeper. You said this the other day when we were driving in the car. You said to me, Father, you know, when you're just snorkeling, you're spending your time snorkeling, and you see all the beautiful coral reefs, you know, it's okay to just sit back and say, wow, that's really cool. But if you actually put on the full scuba gear and you dive down, then you really truly see the beauty of the faith. Yeah, and the then you dive down a little bit further and you're going to find more. And then you're going to dive down a little bit further, and you, but you can never get to the bottom. You'll never learn it all. Yeah. The some um, I had heard from someone that their sister was dating a man and the, the, the sister is orthodox. The man is not orthodox and his difficulty with coming into orthodoxy is that um, if he can't understand it, you know, if I can't understand it totally, then why would I go into mm-hmm. it? And it's like, well, my goodness, that's just how has the world come to that? Do you, how, who is God if you can understand him completely? Yeah, well, that's the that's the spirit of the American, the American right now of the American dream, American life, which is an anti, which is not. I mean, so completely unChristian. I mean, we're no longer living in. Well, I just want to say this real quick. We're no longer living uh, in post modern Christian times. We're not living in pre Christian times. We're not living in any of that. We're living now in pagan times. Mm-hmm. I, I think we need to understand paganism that. is most assuredly on the rise. We're we're living in pagan times right now, and we're truly fighting a spiritual war against the demonic. Uh, realm and um, for many of us that might scare us, but it needs to be talked about. Um, I think for many of us, uh, you know, that's that's what the devil wants. He wants to know everything right away, right right now, and you need to give it to me. Um, and which is why I believe, um, if you need to live the simple life, um, for instance, it's okay that you don't know what's going on. It's okay that sometimes you live under a rock. It's okay that uh, you don't need to know what's happening in news right away. And yeah, you're not going to get the full story, no matter if you go to CNN or Fox News. <laughs> You're never going to know the full story um, because somebody's always going to twist it. Um, what we need to know is to be one in prayer with Christ, to become all prayer, because it is through that that we truly get to know ourselves. Yeah. And that's more important than worrying about the wart on somebody's skin. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. To know, We need to know ourselves and we need to know truly who we are because many people, I think many of us struggle, uh, and I am in there too. Uh, many of us are afraid to look at ourselves and say, okay, I struggle with this. And so we don't want to talk about it. We try mm-hmm. to bury it and bury it until it wakes you up at three o'clock in the morning and says, you know, you should go confess that. Yeah. 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 Sometimes when I see the commercial on TV for the people who are depressed and they wear a mask and have the smiley mask that they put up. And, oh, yeah. You know, and then they take drugs and they can put the mask in their pocket, which I think is pretty significant because it's like, don't worry, you'll need it again later. The, yeah. <laughs> the, yeah. Uh, <laughs> the, <laughs> yeah. The, um, uh, the real answer uh, uh, to depression, to working your way out of being a depressed person, is to know Jesus Christ, to love Jesus Christ. And I'm not saying that means, oh, stop taking your meds. Yeah. And I'm not yeah. saying that doesn't mean that you might still need some meds sure. because we're imperfect. Sure. But the answer is not the meds. Yeah. The answer to for hope The hope of coming out of depression, the hope of coming out of despair is Christ Jesus. Well, enduring. Yeah. Enduring. And and it's it's perfecting those imperfections, which I think so many people are afraid to even address their imperfections. Because, you know, we talked about this on Wednesday night, you know, how we talked about the woman's hair. Right, we talked mm-hmm. about the beauty of the woman's the hair. The beauty of the woman's hair. hair, and how you know now it's it's sexualized. You go on billboards, you go uh, Target. I mean, good grief, women's hair is always sexualized in some sort of manner. Uh, you know, it's um, it's a lot, especially for men and women now in this generation. All of us we're fighting that. So a woman who sees that says, "Well, now I need to be like her." 
Mm -hmm. Apparently, I'm not beautiful. And for men, yeah. and for men, yeah. you know, it's the same mm -hmm. for men. You know, we see this wonderful, good-looking guy who has six-pack and he's rock solid and he's a handsome-looking man. And so, oh well, I'm, I, I'm, I'm chubby, and so I, I'm never going to be beautiful and attract yeah. women. But who cares about that? We, well, a lot of people, evidently. But, but the thing though is that since when did we put people in boxes? Well, as we started putting people in boxes when we started putting uh, soap, deodorants, and perfumes in boxes, okay, and, uh, and things like that so that we can market true. and have a market that we can expect we'll buy. But it's more uh, than just yeah. that, though. I mean, we put more than just the human body in, in boxes. Mm -hmm. We put personalities in boxes. Oh, yeah. You know, I've been researching all these different personality tests that are out there. Mm -hmm. You know, there's... There's the Meyer Briggs test. There's every other test. There's this, if you're a four, then you're not compatible with a nine. If you're an I, then you're not compatible with an E. Uh, uh, and uh, it's uh. like, Lord have mercy. <clears throat> Since when do we put personalities in boxes? Because, well, because the human, the human person is constantly <clears throat> up and down changes, right? That's our life is change. And we have to be okay with going up and then sometimes going down. <clears throat> well, you know, it's you interesting know? to me that the world offers these, these things. And in offering these things to us, the world is really saying, you know what? You really are insufficient, even to make yeah. decisions about who you will be with and yeah. who you will marry. I mean, look at the divorce rate, people. We can help you yeah. with this. And, and it's really interesting to me because if we live in Christ, then we live a life of sacrifice. Yeah. And in living a life of sacrifice, and which is love... We can maintain a relationship. Yeah. We can be together for a lifetime. Yeah. But we don't do that anymore. We've moved away from all of that. We've yeah. moved away from the places that we can hear about that yeah. to the places where we hear about, you know what, you really aren't good enough the way you're made. You need to go into this box and get this, and it will improve who you are. Be Make you more attractive. Yeah. You'll be better, new, and improved. Yeah. Okay. And as you get older, don't worry. We can pull your skin so that you maintain the appearance of youth while you decay inside. Of course, we won't talk about that. No, we won't talk about no, that. No, we're why not going we to bring that up. talk about no, that. why would we talk about now, that? Now, we got to be careful. You keep pulling your skin all the way back, and then it's going to eventually snap forward. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to hit really? somebody in the eye. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think, you know, I think that hits a lot of good points. I think it's, it's hitting everything we're talking about. If, you know, we're so focused on the outside that we're never focusing on the inside. You know, we talked about anxiety and depression. I think that affects a lot of people more than we... Uh, no, uh, I think it affects pretty much all of us um, because we're on, I think a lot of times we're scared and we're unwilling to give our cares and our sorrows over to Christ. Um, I think, I think for many of us, uh, it's, it's learning to that, learning that sacrifice of just trusting, learning that sacrifice of there's nothing else I can do about it anymore. So now I just have to endure this. You know, there's a reason why we're given, given health ailments to endure because mm -hmm. it's burning off the imperfections that are in us. <clears throat> it's burning off well, the imperfections. Living for Christ is, is certainly a difficult life, but uh, the world living for the world is also difficult life. Yeah, it is, but it, we get all of these candy coated pills from yeah. the world that uh, cause us to feel like maybe it's not, you know, there's this hope. The hope in the world is, if I just do this, if I make one more dollar, if I gain one more thing, I'll be more attractive to people. If I make one more dollar, I'll be more secure uh, in this world financially. And and it's an insatiable beast that can never be satisfied. No. 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 And and only only living in Christ is their satisfaction. Uh, contentment. Yeah. Yeah. And, Contentment. And that all comes back to orthodoxy giving you the medicine uh, of the pain in the world is that living that liturgical life from starting with blessed is the kingdom to ending with let us depart in peace. And um, I always tell my people that, especially when feast days come, that Christ gives us that those first four of the Ten Commandments, which are all about him. Mm -hmm. And then the rest of the six are about how we treat our neighbors. Mm -hmm. And if we aren't honoring the first four by loving the Lord our God, uh, not creating any idolatry, uh, not using his name in vain, and remembering the Sabbath day and feast days, um, we'll be very close to attaining the kingdom of heaven within us. Um, but it's for most of us, we like the last six, and then the first four are kind of put off to the side. Mm 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because loving God first over your neighbor is, well, it's not appeasing. You know, I'd rather go use cuss words and blaspheme our Lord's name than saying, Lord, have mercy on me when we're frustrated. Or I like to make, <laughs> you know, we don't have open pagan temples anymore, but we sure make people, we, we idolatrize people. You know, and yeah. then and then when it comes to the Sabbath, the day of the resurrection and feast days, it's very easy easy for us to make excuses. Well, I don't feel like going today. That's my kid's soccer game. Uh, you know, I've I, loved enough this week. I yeah. need time for myself. Yeah, my time for myself. Right? That, How am I going to love others if I don't love myself? Yeah. When Christ teaches us to love ourselves by hating ourselves, not a contradiction. Hate the self that does not bring you into communion with God and love the self, which does. Yeah. It's, you know, it's so, it's, it's, I'll tell you what, being an Orthodox Christian, I have been in Orthodoxy now for, I don't know, 13 or 15 years. I don't really count. Okay. Um, Hi, I'm George. I'm an Orthodox Christian. (laughs) Hi, Hi, George. (laughs) (laughs) Um, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but uh, the life that Father talks about that he lives is is also the life that I live. I wake up in the morning and I say the morning prayers and and uh, I have scripture readings that I do and so on. And, and, and some of this is prescribed for me by my priest. And some of it is what I do, okay, mm-hmm. because uh, as I pray more and more, I find greater contentment and peace in the world yeah. in all this chaos that's yeah. going on. So um, if, if coming into orthodoxy is an acceptance of a way of life, it doesn't mean you come in and now, oh, yeah, we're going to fast for 40 days. Okay, I'm not taking anything but bread and water. I just started. You know, it, it's not about no. that. It's not yeah. about, and nobody's going to say, well, that's what you have to do if you really want to be safe. That's not it yeah, either. That's not what we're saying. No. And it's we're not okay that, that you struggle with theology too. Like, it, it's okay that we talk about this a lot. You know, we, you know, the people ask you questions and I struggle mm-hmm. with understanding this. You know, I, and I always tell my people, especially in homilies, that it's okay that you struggle with trying to understand this. Mm-hmm. And if you struggle with it, you take it to prayer. And mm-hmm. then God will reveal it to you. Yeah. And he'll reveal it to you in multiple ways, whether it's through reading of something or it's just through your prayer, you know, or someone says something to you. A lot of times those are the ways that we, God reveals himself and to answering our questions. And so uh, it's okay that you struggle with some of the theology or all the theology, as long as you know in your heart that you truly love Christ and you want to be saved. Mm-hmm. Right. I always tell people that are coming into orthodoxy, um, don't leave your baggage at the door, bring it in. We'll teach you how to organize it and hold it. Mm-hmm. That's how you hold your, your baggage because we all have baggage. Mm-hmm. And some of it you have to throw away. Yeah. Absolutely. But some of it you need to know how to carry it, which yeah. is your cross. Yeah. Yeah, it's really, uh, I, can't, uh, I can only recommend to you coming uh, into the faith. Yeah. Um, it is not a church created by the philo- through the philosophy of an individual, some man. It is the only church that is in existence by the God man. Mm-hmm. And that may sound like a harsh statement or geez, that's pretty bold, but it's it's not bold. In humility I accept that because if you follow this church and you learn about it, this is the church from thirty three, folks. This is it. If you want the truth in its fullness and you want to grow, this is the place to come. Well, it's even also, it's the fulfillment of the Old Testament church, Mm -hmm. you know, so it's, it's even longer than that. Yeah. You know, and I think, I think for many of us, you know, orthodoxy is for everyone. Yeah. Uh, However, not everybody can handle that. Yeah. And, um, but it is not an easy, but it is for everyone. And we call all tribe, nations, tongues, and people to come to orthodoxy. It's not just a, a club, you know, uh, Many people think that in order to become part of a church, you have to be part of a club. Yeah, like and a social environment. Yeah, it's, uh, it's no. It, the, the, the church isn't there to have parties and have fun. The church is there for the saving of souls in the hospital. Yeah. Yeah, and the salve for the soul, heaven's sakes. Um, you would be uh, astounded at how little judgmental uh, judgmentalism is in the church. Yeah. You really would be. Yeah. Uh, um, but it's, you I know, it's full of people. Yeah, and, and people need to know that, mm-hmm. that, uh, that people are, are fail, you know, but 
but Christ is Christ is welcoming you into the church. Mm -hmm. And this is the church of rules where there is flex. Yeah. According to the leading of the Holy Spirit, according to the needs of the one who is being saved. Yeah, yeah each individual. Is, yes. Yeah, each, each individual, like what Christ met the Samaritan woman at the well. Yes. He met her where she was at, and that's where Christ meets all of us. Yes, and the responsibility for that flex does not lie with the uh, individual. No. In the matter of uh, their walk, uh, I, it's too deep for the time we have left. How do I say this? Um, the matter of flex is something that is the church has always flexed, but does not compromise the truth. Yeah, flex does not mean the compromise of truth. No. And and the reason I'm here is. There are rules that I follow, and there are there is flex in the rules. That's not legalism. No, I left the world of legalism. Even those who say now we're free of the law, and they will tell you if you don't say these words exactly, you are not saved. Okay, and I'm like, are you are you serious? Yeah. <laughs> so this is the church, really, where. I'm telling you, you got to come. It's the most beautiful experience, um, and I wish it for you. I pray that for you. I hope you will come because it's uh, it's fulfillment. Well, yeah, you'll start living that mystery. Yes, you'll start living that mystery of the Christian life. You know, my, like we said in the beginning, my life is no different than the average Orthodox Christian's life. Mm -hmm. Wake up, pray, end yep. our day with prayer. In the middle of the day, there's prayer. Yep, everything I do is prayer. Mm -hmm. I mean, even from the putting on of clothes to you know whether it's your your work clothes or your pajamas. We should say a prayer for it. And I know that may sound silly, but you make everything in a work. Doing the dishes, you say a prayer. You, know, you go to work, you say a prayer. You start your work, you do a prayer. You eat your food, you say a prayer. And it can even just be the smallest thing of just saying, God help me, or Lord bless. Yes. Or, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, God, have mercy on yeah. me, a sinner. It, the prayer doesn't even have to be about the washing of the dishes. It's, it's I'm washing the dishes, but I'm praying because I want to commune with God. Yeah. And commune with him at all times. Yeah. And so everything we do in our life is prayer, you know, from the morning we wake up to the morning we go to sleep. And so, um, and I think, you know, it's, it's good for people to hear what our lives look like from an Orthodox Christian priest and Orthodox Christian layman, what our life looks like. And yeah, our lives are busy. Oh yeah. You know, our lives aren't just sitting around. I'm not waiting for people to, to call me and say, Hey father, uh, I need to do this. I, you know, I, I have a life and I have things that need to get done, mm -hmm. but I also know that the salvation of my soul is happening at every second, yes. every moment, a minute, and that God has sent me to help the salvation of the souls of others, to lead them back to him, mm -hmm. to the waters that are so nourishing and yeah. filling and yeah. satisfying. Yes, Father. Yes. Well, we're coming near to the end of the program. We have about five minutes left. and. Um, I want to take a moment to thank mm -hmm. those who sent uh, donations through the website. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, we received a, uh, approximately $300 from a number of different people. And I uh, just want to say thank you. You can't imagine how much that helps us to continue here. I want to repeat for you again, especially for new listeners, uh, we match the the funds. Okay, so if we receive 300 we also put in 300 from our own pockets, and and that uh, keeps the program going. So one half of the program is paid by donation. The other half is paid by uh, uh, Father and myself. Uh, Icons and More is, uh, is my uh, little uh, mission. I don't even call it business because I don't really make much money from it, <laughs> but uh, it helps to support this program. And I um, want to thank you all for doing that. We have tonight Vespers mm -hmm. at 4 o'clock at St. Mark's in uh, Liberty Township, across from the Youngstown Country Club there. And uh, come down, please, and uh, pray with us. Experience. Come and see yeah. what the church is doing. Uh, come and, and relish in the psalms and in, in the hymnody. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just so beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. And, and uh, our address, again, is 3560 Logan Way, uh, Liberty Township. But um, also, too, that uh, come, just come and experience the fulfillment uh, 
of the beauty and the richness and the continuation mm-hmm. of Christ and the continuation of him working. You know, I, I always tell people that Christ isn't, he hasn't left. I mean, yeah, he has left and ascended to his father, yeah. but he is working through us at all times mm-hmm. the Holy, through the Holy Spirit. And so um, we uh, need to remind ourselves of that and just come. And it doesn't matter what your pro- your problems, I say that in quotation marks, uh, your problems are come and seek uh, the healing of Christ too, as well, and that, uh, and and that, Christ loves you. Yeah. Oh yeah, I mean, um, there's uh, that's a no-brainer, isn't it? Christ does love us, and the world would like us to believe, hey, yeah, I know the guy got on a cross and everything, but you know he died, and they don't acknowledge that he rose. Mm, yeah. Though they have never found the body, all they have ever found is the witness of those who said, I saw him walk on the face of the earth. I ate with him after he died on that cross. That's one heck of a statement. And they wanted them to stop saying that. And so they said, you know, you're just a troublemaker. If you don't shut up, we're going to kill you. Mm. And they said, I can't shut up. It's the truth. So they killed them. And those are the martyrs. Jesus Christ rose from the dead. St. Stephen, yeah, yeah. Acts chapter 6, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I think, um, you know, come to St. Mark's, you know, uh, if you also, too, if you have questions on any of the things that we're talking about, I'll give my email address. My email is frcolinb, as in boy, at gmail.com. Again, that's frcolinb at gmail.com. And, and send me your questions or uh, whatever you may have, concerns, comments, um, and uh, let the Holy Spirit guide you in what to write. Mm-hmm. Uh, don't mm-hmm. try to come up with some crazy, uh, I'm going to come up with this intelligent question and stump father. Let the Holy Spirit, <laughs> let the Holy Spirit guide you into what to write and what to say at all times. Uh, and so uh, we hope we see you tonight, 4 p.m. Mm-hmm. Uh, then tomorrow, 9 a.m. Matins, uh, followed by Divine Liturgy uh, around 10 a.m. And we hope to see you. Yeah, and I want to give out my phone number, 330-207-3672. 330-207-3672. I send out uh, contemplative texts of the sayings of the fathers. If you would like to be on that list, just put in your text to me, your text to me, text me. And then I will include you... Uh, I. I don't need your name. If you want to give it, that's fine. I don't need your name. I'll just put you down as the, for example, the 45th radio caller, okay, Uh, radio contact. And so uh, I'll put you down that way. No one is going to pump you for donations or send you uh, emails, uh, you know, that uh, you just want a million dollars and uh, all you have to do is give me (laughs) 1,500 bucks and I'll get you you $15 million, you know, Uh, that kind of thing. Uh, that won't happen. This is uh, this is uh, part of the work and ministry of our church, and so uh, please, you are welcome to do that. Also, I do uh, uh, type up scriptures with a whole lot of uh, um, history in them, uh, marvelous stuff. If you want that, write scripture in your text and uh, an email address, and I will attach one of those and send it to you. And if you find those pleasing and edifying, please, uh, all you have to do is email me back and say more, and I will send you more. Wonderful. All right. Well, we have just less than a minute, I think. Uh, So let's end with prayer. Uh, Remember, God bless you, and we hope to see you at St. Mark's or any of the Orthodox churches. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Spirit, one God, amen. Amen. It is truly meet the blessed thee, O Theotokos, who art ever blessed and all blameless, and the mother of our God, more honorable than the cherubim, more glorious beyond compare than the seraphim. Thou without corruption bearest God the word, and art truly Theotokos, we magnify thee. Amen. God bless you. You have been listening to On Earth As In Heaven, brought to you by the Eastern Orthodox Church Association and the blessed sacrifices of lay people who donate to this mission. If you would like to attend an Orthodox liturgical service, you can locate a temple near you through the Yellow Pages or via the Internet. Thank you for tuning in to On Earth As In Heaven. And until next time, we pray God's blessings on each of you. 
It's about time. Columbiana County, this is your new News Talk Leader. WR.